Hey guys, welcome to the tactics lecture for the whole tank bricks. Now in this video, we're going to use our MS paint here and we're going to basically talk about the different situations you're likely to find yourself in and the overall theme of the ship. Like you heard me talk about in the fitting video, I talked about my theme or strategy for this ship when I first built it and did the fitting in EFT. And the idea was that because MJDs allow you to escape a long point, and so often in PvP back then and still now, you would get kited. And in a Brutix, if you're kited, you've lost the fight. And it used to be, like, let's say you were in a dual rep or triple rep Brutix um, with two or three armor repairs, and you could rep 800, 1,000 DPS, whatever it happened to be. If you were kited by something, then it didn't really matter how much DPS you could put out or how much tank you could tank. None of it really mattered if you were kited because being a Brutix with blasters, even with null loaded, and that was before the, the Battlecruiser changes, now it actually has better range. But even now, with null loaded, you're still going to barely scratch anything past 15 kilometers, just barely scratching it. So really, it's just your drones problem is with drones and a kite, if something's kiting you, the drones tend not to keep up with them all the time. They only will burst up to them for a second, do a few hits, and fall off. The first burst of drone damage is always the worst for the kiter. And then after that, it, you know, they come one at a time and very disorganized, so it's a lot less damage from drones. So your, your drones aren't very useful. I hate this message. Um... Your drones aren't very useful in a situation where you're being kited, unless it's a ship that can be forced off relatively easily. Um, maybe like if you had warriors and it was a kiting interceptor or something, then maybe you could force it off. But even then, um, usually when I'm an interceptor, I don't worry about warriors, unless they're bonused in some way. Um, so kiting was always the risk, is that you would run into a kite. Not that you would run into something that was stronger than you, because that, you know, if that happened, you still had a reasonable fight. It just sucked when you got kited and you couldn't do anything. It was like, um, you know, somebody holding you at the distance and unable to, to hit them, you know. So, the MJD allows us to avoid that situation. The MJD allows us to, let's say, give me this here. Let's say you've got an interceptor out here at 18 to 20k, and you know he's orbiting you in whichever direction. He can have a point on you, and it doesn't really matter because you've got an MJD. That's a fight you don't want. Let's say it's a Cinnabar kiting you, or it's an Orthrus, or it's a Carries, or it's you know, just an interceptor tackling you for a fleet that's, you know, in warp coming at you from across system. No matter what, you have the ability to use your MJD. And the proper tactic when using your MJD is to find something in space first that you can warp to. Something relatively safe. I will typically go with moons or asteroid belts. If you see a bunch of stuff in a cluster, like you've got... Um, you've got belts in the cluster, and you've got planets, and you've got the customs office all in the cluster. And, you know, I'm trying to draw what they look like from memory, probably wrong. But they're all, like, right on top of each other, so you can't really tell which one you're warping to. That's the ideal place to warp to if you, can, if you have the choice. Otherwise, just warp anywhere, and it's better than nothing. Um, ideally, you'd warp to a safe spot, but that's a lot harder to pull off in the heat of the battle. So... What I will typically do is just align and then MJD, wait the 10 seconds or 9 seconds or whatever it is, and then you shoot 100k out, and then you spam your warp, and you instantly go into warp to whatever item that was, losing the point that was on you here from that interceptor. Well, I don't look very good. Interceptor. So you would lose the point, and you would continue moving. Now, what's this 10 kilometers for? So 
we know we can't fight stuff that kites us. Like the Orthrus is not a good fight. A kite in Gila, not a good fight. Anything that we can get our teeth into with the web and the scram, now that's something that we want to fight. Our DPS is reasonable, 728 with antimatter. With uh, Void, that's going to go 800-something. So reasonable DPS and decent hit points to give us some time. Hit points are time. That's what they are. The more hit points you have, the more time you have. Um, 84,000 hit points, it all depends on the DPS you're taking. But let's say you're taking on two Tech 3 destroyers, as you'll see in one of the videos, you know, that's going to be roughly somewhere between 600 and 800 DPS that you're going to be taking. So let's assume the worst and say it's 800 DPS. You have roughly 100 seconds, um, just quick math, 100 seconds with which to kill those ships. And once you kill one, all of a sudden your time goes up. You know, that countdown, that timer. So you imagine a timer that starts at the beginning of the fight and it's at 100 seconds. And then imagine 20 seconds into the fight, you're down to 80 seconds, and one of the ships dies. Right now, all of a sudden, they've got half the DPS, so instead of looking at 80 seconds, you're now back up to maybe 160 or 150, 140 seconds. Right? Because now you only got half the DPS. So that's how I look at an, a buffer tank, whether it be shield or hull or armor. A buffer tank is time to make good decisions and to execute all the things that you can execute that can possibly give you a chance to win that fight. Buffer is time, and 10 kilometers is your kill zone. So if you watched, um, if you got my Stabber Fleet Issue Guide, you know, I talked a lot about there being this um, kill zone, right? And in between that kill zone, that was your hot spot. And the kill zone started at like roughly, I think, 15 kilometers and went until roughly 30, right? So if you were moving fast and something was coming at you, that was your kill zone. In that zone was where you would get the best tracking and the most damage output and the best chance of killing that target, and that that was the area you wanted to try to keep your targets, right? Well, for this, your kill zone is 10 kilometers, and your really violent zone is actually right here somewhere around three kilometers so if you look over there at the uh, at the optimal and fall off you see our optimal is 2.8 kilometers with a fall off of 7.8 now here's a general lesson on tracking if you're ever having trouble tracking a target and you see on your screen you should always have your damage notifications turned on and they come like if this was an eve screen they would be right in here in the top middle of the screen and you would see something that said, you know, your neutron blaster misses. If you start seeing a lot of that, then you're not tracking. And what you need to do is then change your keep at, because you're going to have a keep at of 3K and an orbit of 500. Now, keep at of 3K is used for destroyers. It's used for frigates. It's used for anything like that. Against a Tech 1 cruiser or something like that, I would go with a simple approach. You want to minimize transversal and maximize DPS by keeping them inside the uh, optimal range because your maximum DPS is at 2.8 or lower. So the only reason you go out beyond 2.8 is to improve your tracking. So in general, anything close to you, right? Say there's something that close moving at 500 meters a second versus something out at 5k moving the same 500 meters a second. Well, the transversal velocity of this thing out at 5k is less than the one at you know, 500 meters. So because it's further away, and you can think of this kind of like if you think about a big fan blade, like a ceiling fan, and the outside of the fan blade has to be moving faster than the inside. Well, that doesn't make any sense, does it? So ignore that analogy. But you know, transversal velocity, anyways. So that's how it works, and I've I've completely failed on my example. But this one here is easier to shoot than this one here. So the further out you can move it, the better. And not only that, because we have a scram and a web. So our scram and a web means that we can 
grab them and hold them right here. You know, wherever we pretty much say we want them is where we can put them. Because not only that, we've got this newt here. So with the newt, we're able to hold them. And I have yet to come across a frigate or destroyer that this ship did not absolutely shred. I mean, it's it's violent how how much it shreds these sh these ships. Once you get them at that keep at 3K and then and you get that tracking, you may miss a few shots at the beginning at that. You know, there's that initial um, confusion and chaos when the, you begin the battle where there's velocity that's now being bled off by the web and, you know, a lot of transversal maybe. But then as soon as it settles in for the fight and you got that keep at 3K working, they just disappear. Tech 3 cruisers, uh, not Tech 3 cruisers, Tech 3 destroyers, um, frigates, salt ships, everything I've come across, you know, smaller than a cruiser just melts right there. Keep at 3K. Um, but approach, if I, was, if I was fighting against a thorax, for example, I would approach. Just straight up approach. Orbit 500 maybe, but why? I mean, you're not going to avoid any damage. So you're just going to hurt your own tracking. Just approach. Um, so that's your general strategy. That's like when you're flying this ship, you dominate everything within 10K. If it's within 10K and it's smaller than a cruiser, you own it. You will eat it for breakfast. So anything outside of, of 10K, say out here at 20K, you just leave. You're gone. MJD. Because they can't hold you. Now, there has been a recent change in the game. In the last month or two, probably month and a half, two months, um, where now Hicks, heavy interdictors, can stop an MJD. I believe it's with a focused point. I don't know if the... I don't know if the the bubble on a hick does it. I'd have to research that. But I know the focus point will stop an MJD. So as a result, you're seeing more hicks on the field, or I'm seeing more hicks um, out there in EVE lately. I'm seeing more hicks um, on gate camps um, in low sec and in null sec. So that's, that's a downside. But you're still not going to run into them all the time. Um, so again, your ideal targets are destroyers, frigates, and then depending on how well you get in isolation, larger ships like cruisers. Now, once you get to battle cruisers and you get to tech two cruisers, that's kind of like, there's the line. That's the line that, you know, at that point you're gambling. You're going to crush a Caracal. You're going to crush a Thorax. You're going to crush a Vexer, but only if it's one versus one. Now, you versus two Caracals, maybe you'll kill both of them. You've got a good chance. Um, it's worth a shot. I would take that fight. Uh, they're going to kite you being Caracals, so if you don't catch them, you're going to have to MJD, but hey, no worries. Um, so, whatever. you you got to dominate your 10K space and choose your targets wisely. Now... What about the fights where you can't choose your targets? Now, you're going to see me in these videos, and you're going to see me, and I'm just roaming willy-nilly through Cloud Ring, through Syndicate, through, I think, Summon Providence, and I'm just, you know, without a scout, without links, without really any implants or drugs, just the 3% hole most of the time, and I'm going, you know, gate to gate. And so there's that chance that sometimes you're going to jump into something that's absolutely unfightable. Because your agility over here, your agility right there, is so terrible. Reapproaching the gate is rarely going to work if they have any kind of scram or web in their fleet. Now, if they're all kitey ships, yeah, you can get back to the gate. Like if you jump in and there's you know two Orthruses and a Cerberus, then... Uh, you know, yeah, forget them. You can either run back to the gate, no problem, uh, or unless they scram you, or you can just MJD. But they won't scram you most of the time. Um, so if you jump into a camp, usually your best bet is to find something. Now, this is assuming that you believe you can escape. Like if they've got a hick, um, you're probably not going to escape. 
if they've got frigates, a lot of frigates there, you're going to get scrammed. Frigates tend to carry scrams. So do destroyers. So in that case, you're not going to be able to go fast enough to get those. So what I would do in that case is, let's say I jumped into a camp. And let's say that camp had um, a thrasher. No, let's, no, let's change that. Change that. Change that. Let's say it was a saber. All right. They had a saber with a bubble. And they had two Sve pulls. All right. Not the best mouse handwriting, I know. Two Sve pulls. And let's say they also had a Drake. Because you got to have a Drake, right? Got to. Now, what you're going to assume from this is all of these are going to have scrams. Three scrams are what you have, and a long point here with the drake. So what you need to do is when you jump in, you need to assess that. Who has the scrams? Who's likely to have the scrams? And, you know, if you're relatively new to the game and you haven't learned this yet, then my best advice to you is to study study EFT, look at the fits, um, learn from experience out in the field. Uh, but in general, a good general rule is that most destroyers and frigates are going to fit scrams. There are obviously exceptions. Interceptors will typically fit long points. Um, Slicer is going to fit a long point. Um, Several others like that will have long points. Some people are just not very smart, and they'll fit long points to ships that shouldn't have them, and you get away like that. Sometimes you even come across people who have no point at all, which strangely still happens. They're PvPing without a, uh, a point at all. So what you would do in this case, you jumped in, there's a bubble. You can't warp, and you couldn't warp anyway. You're going to be pointed. Um, you probably can't reapproach the gate. Because if you try to reapproach the gate, you're going to get at least scrammed by these ships. And your micro-warp drive turned off. And your MJD shut off. So you don't even want to try the MJD yet. Because then you're going to have to wait that like 60 second or minute 20 or whatever it is. Um, two minutes or wh whatever for the reactivation delay. So don't even try the MJD yet. Not until you've removed all the scrams. Get used to the little things you see down here above your capacitor that show you, you know, whether you're pointed. I'm not, I'm not even going to try to make my own point graphic because that does not look like anything like it. But there's two of them, and one's a scram and one's a disruptor. And just learn which one's which. But what I would do is I would look at their position. So let's do this. Let's, let's see here. All right, so let's get another circle going. And then let's get a triangle. Okay, so there's the gate. Let's say that the triangle is the gate. And let's say that you are the star. Okay, so you jump in, and right here, you are 12 kilometers off the gate. Okay, so you're 12 kilometers off the gate. They're all going to be huddled right up against the gate. So what you're going to do is you're going to find something in this direction. You're going to align. Shift click, click the micro warp drive. Get every bit of speed you can out of it so that you can get yourself moving away from that gate. Right? And what that's going to do is it's just going to limit their DPS input on you for a little while, right? The, the slower, lazier pilots and the slower ships are going to take a little bit longer to get DPS um, or full DPS onto you because they've got, to, they've got to rush out here to you, right? The Drake, you know, it's going to have to lock you and shoot you. But should the Drake have any scram or web, it's going to take that Drake longer to get to you because he's... He's just slow, right? And you're going to have this little burst of speed here. It's going to delay his ever getting on top of you. 
All right. So for one, all of these ships are passive DPS. They're all going to use auto cannons. They're both min matar. All right. Drake's even passive. So trying to newt to reduce DPS is no longer an option. Like if they had, for example, a Tyrannus. All right. Man, that is not cool. All right, Tyrannus. Um, if they had, for example, a Tyrannus, then you definitely want to use your newt on that Tyrannus. And you may even want to primary the Tyrannus. I'm not sure. It all depends on what gets to you first. So, in this case, you know, you've got roughly from, from the stay pools, they're each going to have between three and 400 DPS, typically. Um, you can't be sure, but between three and 400 DPS. Um, the Saber is completely unknown. If he's pure tackle fit, it could be something close to 200, or he could be as high as 400 pretty easily. Um, but I think you just assume something more along the lines of 300. So if you're prioritizing based on DPS, you want to prioritize the greater DPS. This is going to be somewhere around 300 or less, probably more like 250, right? But the Tyrannus is much faster than these other ships. Tyrannus is more likely to get on top of you. So, in that case, they're all relatively the same DPS, so forget all that, right? Forget all that. The next sorting procedure, or the next thing of importance to sort by, is distance. So, it's the Tyrannus is your first target. That's number one, because that's going to get to you first. Put your nude on it, keep at 3K, and get Scram, Web, and then once you see, you know, after a second or two, go ahead and overload your guns. Or you can from the very beginning if you want. It doesn't really matter. But your first shot or two is going to miss or do very small damage. Make sure you get your drones out too as well. Um, just bring out the bring out the big drones, the heavies. Uh, not the heavies, the, the mediums. Because if it's scrammed and webbed, mediums are as good as lights. Um, better than lights. So, so what you're going to do is you're just going to keep at 3K, shoot. You're going to absolutely nuke that Tyrannus. He's going to go down in 10 seconds, maybe 20 at most. Then, you know, like we said before, you've got that time. You've got 84,000 hit points of time. Okay. Drake's probably doing somewhere around 400. Now, it all depends on the Drake. You can get them up 600 or more. But typically, they, they love being tanky, so they, they'll, they'll sacrifice DPS for tank in a lot of cases. So, so if this is all the case here, and let's get rid of that 300. If this is the case here, then we're going to say that this is times 2, so 600, 900, 1300, uh, 1550. So you're going to have somewhere, just again, quick math, somewhere around um, about 45 seconds to a minute. Just quick math there, and that's probably pretty accurate. 45 seconds to a minute of time that this fight is going to last. Now remember, as you kill ships, that time's going to increase, or at least it's going to decrease slower, I guess. So kill the Tyrannus, boom. You're 10 seconds into the fight, 15, whatever. Tyrannus is down. All of a sudden, you've got less DPS on you, right? But you've still got three scrams. Now you want to prioritize, because these are all based on the same DPS. You don't really care about bubbles. Now you want to prioritize based on value. If you can't prioritize based on range, and you can't prioritize based on um, DPS, if they're all if all things are the same, then you want to prioritize based on value. Because if you're going to die, it's going to it's going to happen. You're going to die a lot. Um, that's this style of PvP is it's kind of just throw it out there, have fun, and die. And it's a 30, 40 mil, and you get a new one. No big deal. Um, even get potted. Who cares? You've got a three million is pod. Um, so what you want to do is prioritize on value. You want to do as much damage to them before you die as possible. That's your goal. Okay, that's your winning condition. Is if you do more damage to them, they do to you as far as ISK. Right? So you've got your two Svapels. Um, you immediately go after them. As you've seen in the video, um, typically they're going to be lazy with their selection of defense mode and whatever. The Saber is probably going to be skittish and stay around the edges. So this is worst case scenario here. This is assuming they all execute properly. They don't. 
typically they don't. Typically they're going to do something wrong and mess up, or one's going to jump away or um, run away. The saber's going to drop a bubble and run. You never know. But start on the spade pool. Now, spade pool is going to take you probably about, depending on how he's fit, if he's just like a sensor booster insta lock fit, he's going to die in 5, 10 seconds. He's just going to disappear. If he's buffer fit, it's going to take you, or even active fit, it's going to take you about 20 seconds per spade pool. Now, because we're reducing DPS, this is a race to the bottom here. It's a race to, to, to your zero hit points and you exploding. So overload as much as possible. Um, best to just be straight up with it and just not even worry about uh, burning out. Because, you know, if the fight's going to last less than a minute, you know your gun's going to last more than a minute. Because, well, for one, you're going to have the energy neutralizer in between the guns. Um, might as well overload as much as possible. Get that extra 15% damage output. Okay, make sure you continue assigning your drones using your hotkeys so that you have them on target. And then you're going to put your DPS on that spade pool. Focus it on one spade pool. Don't split it. Focus it all in one spade pool. Keep at three kilometers. Out here, you're three kilometers. Keep it at 3K and drop the spade pool. Then do the same. Rinse and repeat. On down the line. Now, once you kill the Tyrannus in the Spade Pool, here's something cool you're going to notice. Is that all but the most dedicated of enemies are going to get scared. They don't want to lose their ship. Their buddy just lost his ship. They don't want to lose their ship. Everybody's dying around them. They're thinking, well, this was supposed to be an easy fight. What's going on here? Um, they're going to start running, most likely. Grab what you can and kill it. Now, they, if they stick to it and they absolutely take it to the end, good for you. Rinse and repeat. Kill the staple the same way. Keep at three kilometers and start shooting. Now, if he's a 10 in afterburner fit, he might be able to escape you. But if he does, he's doing almost no DPS to you. Who cares? Let him go switch to the next target. Watch that distance. If you see the target is getting away from you and you see that the staple, or even more so a confessor, they tend to do it more often, the confessor is starting to get away from you. And maybe he's at 8K now. And... and parting and leaving. Um, switch targets. Don't waste your time on something you're not hitting. Switch targets. If you see that you're wasting DPS on a target that's too far away, just switch targets. And, and keep going through the targets. And eventually, one way or another, you're either going to force them to back off, or more than likely you're going to kill all of the scramming ships. Right? You can't kill this Drake. You can't kill him. You're not going to do it. Um, after you've killed all this stuff, you're going to be in structure. You're going to be, and you know, most of your tank is structure. I mean, how much? It's hard to see because you're not seeing effectives here. But probably somewhere around 60 to 70% of your tank structure. Um, probably closer to 70. So you're going to be roughly halfway through structure at this point. Um, now is the time to align yourself you know, away from the Drake, or it doesn't really matter too much, but align yourself to something you can warp to, MJD, and then warp off. And when you warp, ideally warp something like 100 kilometers. Um, so th that's really all you need to know to fly this ship. Those are the fundamental things that you need to know. But let's go over just a couple more things to help you to, to be ready for different situations. So let's take the, the example. If you jump into something that you can't fight, right? I'm not going to bother drawing it. If you jump into something you can't fight, it's a big, no, not you, it's a big no, right? Then if it's too much for you to win at all, you have two options. You either commit and try to kill something before you die, which is more than often going to be the, the proper choice, or you align MJD, and then should the MJD get canceled, then you go back to your original plan of kill everything you can before you die. And you're going to have to accept that because this ship is disposable and it's only like 30 mil after platinum insurance. Platinum insured all the time, right? Platinum insured. It's like 30 million isk, maybe 40 million, depending on where you buy it. I think it runs me about 40 million. Um, after insurance from De Dixie, which is where I usually shop, but De Dixie is overpriced. So if you go to Amar or Jita, 
you're likely to do it for less than 40 and do it closer to 30. Um, that is to say, you pay the full price for the ship and the modules, but then your insurance pays out like 55 mil or something. So it's a very cheap ship to just take out there and throw away. And that's what you should do. Take it out there and just throw it at stuff. Have fun with it. Take chances. The biggest thing, when I, when I do one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons or when someone um, asks me to help them with their PvP and asks me why they're having trouble, the biggest advice that I give them and the biggest problem I see them making is people aren't trying. They're not going out there and doing. They're not dying. And I mean, I don't know how someone expects to, to get good at anything without failing because, you know, failure is obviously the greatest teacher. You don't, you don't learn from winning. Winning just makes you more confident without actually teaching you anything. Um, confidence is great and you need confidence to try, but if, if you don't lose, you never, you never learn. So, you know, search the site, um, for my article about open broadcasting software, open broadcaster software. OBS. Uh, that software is what I use to record my fights. It's free. It's open source. Um, there's instructions on how to set it up. Some people's computers differ and maybe need different settings um, due to graphics cards and dual monitors or whatever you may have. Um, but watch your fights. Um, I can't tell you how important that is. That that was it still is something that I do. Um, routinely as I watch all of my fights every single one I watch and I look at what I did what I could have done better and you know try to analyze you know what mistakes were there what maybe could I work on if I did this could I improve the speed of getting DPS on target you know all these little tweaks and stuff that you can watch yourself and you can really say you know how could I do better Right, and it's all about the questions. How could I do better? How could I get DPS on faster? How could I position myself better to escape? You know, had I maybe MJD towards the belt instead of the out into nowhere, maybe would that have been better? All those things. So I can't stress that enough. Watch your fights. Um, if you want to, you can send me your fights, and if I have time, I will look at them and I will tell you what you can do better. From, you know, the littlest things to the biggest. So, go out there and, and take this ship and throw it at everything you see. Um, that's it for the tactics lecture. Um, I, again, just want to stress, it's a disposable ship. Don't throw it away stupidly. Don't jump into what you know is a camp because your friend told you that there's a 30-man gate camp. Don't do that. You know, don't go to someone's home system and expect not to be blobbed. You're going to find the fairer fights away from their home system. Like, you know, for example, in the, the video, um, You Sneaky Ass, that I'm in this, this rupture, rupture flying. Not rupture. In this, why did I say rupture? In this Brutix flying. Um, I die in their home system, right? But before that, I'm able to keep the numbers more manageable. But when I get to their home system, you know, you're fighting at a massive disadvantage whenever you're in someone's home system. They can switch ships, they can counter you, they can you know do everything they need to, to kill you. Whereas if you're off their home turf, a few jumps away even, then you have the advantage because they weren't expecting you and they're not ready for a whole tank Brutix, which uh, pound for pound and isk for isk is a extremely powerful ship. But I just don't want you to get discouraged when you die. You're going to die. I, I die um, every time I fly it. I, I, I assume every time I fly it that I'm going to die that night, that roam. I'm going to die. Plain and simple. I'm going to die. I go by it, and within two hours, it's dead. But hopefully in that two hours, I've killed more than it's worth. And that's the nature of this ship. Now, does that always happen? No. Sometimes I get kills, I survive. Sometimes the ship lasts a week. But I expect to lose it every single time I fly it.